Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and we have here episode four of the Gateway Project, and I have dire news. It turns out that Joseph Kerman, who we caught last episode and interrogated, is actually one of the zealot anti-Gateway fanatics that have been popping up all over the place and he has minions now who are trying to sneak in and sabotage our work. We'll come back to what's going on right there after we take a look at this next launch. So the launch window has come for the Z1 truss and check out what's happening here. See how it's jiggling? I couldn't get it to fast forward into the daylight, so I'm going to have to do a nighttime launch. I'm not quite sure what was going on. I tried for a really long time to get this to fast forward, and it just kept on jiggling over and over again. I think maybe it had something to do with the fact that the Z1 truss has some gyros in it, or maybe it's because I'm welding the part together. I'm not quite sure what it was, but ultimately I just went for the launch. Uh, I expected a complete and total failure uh, explosion on the launch pad or some kind of rapid unexplained disassembly immediately after launch but it launched okay it wanted to wiggle a lot it was almost impossible to fly especially with the SAS turned on I had to turn the SAS off eventually in order to do anything with it because I couldn't get it to turn I was trying to make it turn toward the direction you need to go toward the KSS nothing turned off the SAS and it flew okay. Well, that's a bit of a head scratcher, I suppose, but nothing to worry about. Every launch now and then is gonna have its glitch, right? Well, that's not the only glitch that happens. And after a few glitches, we start wondering whether or not those saboteurs from Joseph Kerman are uh, getting into some funny business, messing around with navigation software or what have you. But so far, Bob, Jeb, and Bill have no reason to suspect that it's going to be any worse than what it is already. In fact, the stage here, the little interstage, is separating nicely. I use a little trick on that. Uh, actually, I could show that to you. I suppose if I'm going to show you the trick I'm using on that, I might as well just come in here and disassemble the entire thing and show you what it's looking like. Uh, so you can see here, I am using the 375 expanded the KLS-6 launcher. So we're starting to use the big boys here. Now what goes into that? Well a KW rocketry uh, engine. Well, let's get rid of our launch clamps, get those out of the way, just some lights and fins on there. Moving our way up, uh, you can see it had some retro boosters here to pull that stage away once it decouples. Now here's the trick. So all I did was I put two decouplers. It's the same decoupler twice. The first one puts on a fairing. The second one decouples the lower stage and leaves the fairing on. So when this one decouples, the fairing actually, stay, fairing actually stays intact and drops away. Now yes, there is, if you go over in here, uh, there is a, uh, not the two, this one, uh, and it is also a fairing, but Look at what it's doing right there. You see that? Oh, now it stopped. But oh, there it goes again. See that weird jittery kind of, I, I have no idea what that's coming from. Uh, well, anyway, that doesn't happen when I do it with this one. This one is nice and clean, no jitters. So there you go, two of those, uh, an engine there. Now this is a really cool gyro right here. Uh, you just put one on each side and it makes like a little band, a little loop. So if you're using KW, you can get really cool uh, gyro in there instead of having like some big thick thing, which they don't even have a 3.75 in what I use anyway. More retros to throw away that stage. Got some circular solar panels, batteries, uh, remote tech antenna right here and right here. Some more lights on it. And now we'll get up inside the fairing. So we have ourselves over in here, a, uh, let's see, the Minotaur 1, 1.25 meter orbital injection stage. So we have one of those right there. And that one's got a couple struts on here. You can see I'm doing the little trick uh, to hold down this little beam on top here. I'm doing a little trick where I have the strut on there so that I don't leave behind this white strut. 
I've put this little cubic strut and then strutted to that. So then when this thing uh, decouples, the white strut will still be stuck to the cubic strut, but I'll be able to go out and use one of my Kerbal Attachment System grabs to take this one away, leaving no junk stuck on there. Uh, so you got your basic lights, solar panels, battery, remote tech, uh, CPU in there, and all of this is on a docking node that will eventually dock to the Unity module. Uh, this dish is just stuck to the side. I have modded the part so that it can be grabbed by Kerbal Attachment, and that part will, when I can get some Kerbals up there, will be disassembled, taken off of there, and reattached to the end of that arm, and then that arm is going to act as an antenna arm. Uh, so I'm simulating the plasma uh, dissipators over there and some DC converters by using those batteries. We also bring up PMA number three, which I have actually modified now. The PMAs are pointing in the right direction, so that's good. Uh, let's see, we have a little mini tug. I think I call that one the Pegasus Mini. No, that's not that one. It's the Pixie. Hey, that's right, that's right. The Pixie, the 1.25 mini space tug right there. So that'll help uh, bring this thing and put it into place. And now we get to the Z1 truss itself. So this arm is the antenna arm, which we will take care of in the next episode. We have our tray, which is also hinged and has some Kerbal attachment parts, and we'll get to that in a future episode. I think that might be it. There's a couple lights on here, but the rest of this, this is all one modded, welded part. Uh, so oh, while we're here, I'll show you another little trick. So if you're trying to see something that's uh, inside, let's say, see, I've pushed this using the uh, plus key in as close as I possibly can. But if you move back and move to the side, you can grab your rocket, slide it to the front, come back again, and then when you move forward, you can actually go inside and see what's going on. So I just have some basic little structure in there to hold everything together, but you can see that I have thrown in four gyros because in the real Z1 truss, uh, there are four gyros. They're actually rotated and they sit a little diagonally and I didn't want to do that with these. So I have them mounted sideways like that uh, and a bunch of handrails, which a lesson I learned was put lots of handrails so that your Kerbals can grab onto things. Uh, the, oh, that docking node is not part of the weld, but the rest of them are. You can only have one docking node that's part of your weld. If you remember, I might have mentioned that before. Uh, if I didn't, then know now you have to be very careful about the things that can be activated or triggered or manipulated or whatever. You can only have one of them. And so I have the one docking node. And now I've also learned the lesson that it has to be on the top uh, or it has to be in its normal orientation, that is. Okay, so that's it. By uh, welding all of that stuff together, we have significantly reduced the parts on that thing. And here's a quick peek at what the Z1 looks like for real, uh, sitting on top of the Unity module there. Alrighty then, so you've seen it in the vehicle assembly building, and now it should make a whole lot more sense when you see it up here, and all the parts are decoupling and moving around, and things are being adjusted and all that good stuff. So we go back to our launch, and what we think is going pretty well so far. We dump that second stage while we still have a periapsis of 7 kilometers, making sure that there's no orbital debris once again. And then deploy our orbital injection, little mini stage there, little mini stage. And there she is again, the KSS, ah, we're home, here to bring you another part. Have you ever been playing where you're gliding in close like this? to your target getting ready to rendezvous and it, it just feels like you're floating in a pool. Sometimes I just like sitting there and watching it slide in like that. Oh, so right there, uh, there's a little trick you can do too. See how it didn't actually have a docking node on both sides? I only had the docking node on one side. You can still decouple it. I had it directly attached to that stage that we are now sending off to go deorbit. So you don't have to put two docking nodes on those. Uh, you just need the two if you want to be able to redock the things again later. 
So now here we are. We are sliding ourselves into position above the Unity module, docking that Z1 truss. A little bit of trivia, actually. Uh, the Z, it stands for Zenith. You see, the station is set up sort of like a ship where you have the fore and the aft, except that they also have to deal with the, uh, the up and the down, being in three-dimensional, of course. So they have Zenith and Nadir for up and down. you got forward and aft, port and starboard. So whenever I'm talking about some of these parts, and I say P, 6, S, 1, that kind of thing, the S just means starboard, P is port, Z for Zenith. Now, check this one out. This was an interesting little dilemma. It looked like the arm was stuck. Look at that thing. What is going on in there? Uh, yeah, what do I do? I have my arm stuck. And then it occurs to me, well, maybe I can switch over and actually jiggle the arm using the robotic controls. Uh, those are the robotic controls from... Magic Smoke Industries, Infernal Robotics. Love that mod. It's so much fun. That's part of what's going to make this fun is putting some of that stuff around and being able to manipulate it as part of my construction of this station. I think I'm definitely going to be looking at doing that robotic arm that they have. I think it's called the Canadarm. So anyway, I, I jiggle the, the robotic arm and sure enough that releases that PMA3 and its little pixie mini tug. The mini tug. But I'm afraid my assertion that we had taken care of the sabotage was a little premature because what comes up next is a complete failure, systems failure, uh, in the docking attempt of PMA3. All of a sudden, the tug just turned and flew away. Bob Carmen looked into the logs on the software and he saw that they had definitely been tampered with the navigation software had been modified and it was what prevented that thing from being able to use its automated docking sequence. Uh, instead it deorbited and our PMA3 and our little pixie crashed into the surface of Kerbin. Although at least it was a pretty location on Kerbin and so here we are spreading our debris all around this beautiful picturesque location and I guess making it a little less pretty. So now we need to wait for another launch window to send up a replacement PMA-3. And since we know that one of the other PMAs, uh, well, both of the other PMAs were sabotaged previously, we need to replace them. So we're sending up all three at the same time. We reach our launch window. Our mission control is coming down under the orbit of the station, so it's time to go. And up goes the replacement parts. PMA-3 launch. Attempt number two. Will this one go better, or have the saboteurs gotten to this launch as well? And there's your answer. Somebody got into the programming and modified our navigation systems, or attitude control, or something. We're still investigating. However, Jebediah grabbed manual control and attempted to fly it himself, disabling all of the safeties and everything and saying, I got this. And guess what? He's Jebediah. He knows how to fly. Look at that. So he recovers the PMA-3 launch, and we actually manage to try to get into orbit. But are there any other failures waiting on the horizon? While we wait to find out, perhaps you might have been saying to yourself, what is he talking about, Z1 truss? Well, you know now that the Z stands for Zenith, so it goes up and away. And oh, here we're coming in on the KSS. Uh, well, that Z-1 was launched in October of 2000 by a space shuttle and brought up in order to act as a docking point for one of the first of four large solar arrays, providing enough power so that our people could actually go up there and start populating the station. Well, back to here, you can see that we have had another mission failure. So uh, this is pretty widespread at this point. Uh, the entire assembly, all three PMAs were sabotaged came crashing down into the ocean. This is getting ridiculous. So Jebediah takes over control and we send up two more PMAs. Unfortunately, one of them's on back order with the factory, so we can only send up two, but we are sending up a new second stage or an injection stage right there. You're taking a look at it. And with Jebediah at the controls this time, no automation here, we have the new PMAs sliding in and docking to the station quite successfully. 
or so we thought. With so many problems plaguing the station so far, it was decided that a crew should be sent up, so Bob Kerman himself is going up to inspect the space station and see if there's any issues with it because we've had so many uh, sabotage attempts and Joseph Kerman is out there somewhere. He slipped the surveillance. We have no idea where he is right now. Uh, and he could be out there planning who knows what terrible crimes. Now, instead of actually showing this launch, I'm going to switch right up to the docking point where we make contact with the station because that's when all hell breaks loose. Oh, it looks peaceful. It looks quiet. But as soon as the inner docking ring was opened and Bob Kerman started gliding his way down into the station, Joseph Kerman's voice came on the intercom uh, throughout the entire station, just going, ah, 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 and then this. The station's engines turned on, and it started a retro burn sending it down into the atmosphere and destroying everything. We lost contact with Bob Kerman and his two red shirts and at this point their whereabouts are unknown but they are presumed dead. These last images of the KSS were recorded from high orbit in the Tedris satellite that has a little spy cam that can look down on the planet. And it trained its little spy cam on the KSS as it was being destroyed. And then my computer took a header. So this started happening. And believe me, it is not going this fast when I was watching it. Uh, I have sped this part up. I was getting frames about every 10 seconds. Uh, ultimately, I pulled up the debug menu and I saw that I was getting stack overflows and null reference exceptions, and I had to close KSP at that point. So that's it? You're quitting the series? It's over? No, of course not. Haven't you ever seen the movie Contact? you always have two versions. So here we see the new Zarya, the new Unity, new PMAs, a new Zvezda module, and a new Z1 truss. All of these versions have been looked over by Jebediah and Bill. Uh, we're still searching for Bob. Maybe there will be news about what happened to him in the next episode. So these have all been looked over, and there is no sign of any sabotage. We've increased security, we've doubled the guard, uh, Joseph Kerman is still on the loose. We may find out what's going on with him in the next episode as well, uh, but for now there is no news. Also in the next episode, I will probably pull the curtain back a little and tell you what really happened here. And then we will move on to the first actual crew transfer to the station and some EVA construction. So until next time, see you Kerbinauts.